All right, so pork belly, slap, slap. Uh, we are prepping a pork cheddar because it is the season for pork cheddars. So who we are, this is, it's not quite a whole side of belly. Uh, I trimmed some off yesterday for dinner. It was delicious. Um, so today, we're going to turn the rest of it into a pork cheddar. Now, um, I already took the liberty of butterflying it. I know you guys will probably want to see that. I'm so sorry. Uh, it's just the way it had to be. Now, I'll walk you through how to butterfly. So, pick your side. Sharp knife. Okay. And I just went down like one side, scored it all the way down. Okay, as evenly as I could. All right, and then just kept on working back, work back, work back, work back, and keep peeling it back, peel back, peel back, peel back. All right, now this top side is um, a little bit thin. I like it a little bit thin so I can get lots of sort of rolls or nice swirls at the end, I should say. So all the way through, and then you'll come, you'll come to the seam section. This is where you wanna sort of pay attention. You don't wanna go too far through that seam <clears throat> okay, otherwise you're going to come out the other end and this is going to detach, okay, which is not ideal at all. All right, so that's how I butterflied it. Now, <clears throat> now it's butterflied. Let's just work on this skin side for a second. So let's open it up, flip it over. All right. So we've got our meat side on one side and our skin side on the other. Okay, now... Uh, you've seen this tour many times in my videos. This is called a jacquard. It is in the category of a meat tenderizer. This one has 48 stainless steel retractable blades. So as I push down into the skin, these will stick out a bit, okay? And prick tiny holes into the skin of the pork. That is the ideal method for preparing the skin for that gorgeous crackling, okay? I don't like scoring it at all. I prefer the pricky prick method so I can get those bubbles of nothing. Now, if you notice on the skin, sometimes you'll get some pork, some hairs on the skin from the pork. Uh, it doesn't really bother me to be honest. Get underneath and just clip them off. Just a couple of hairs there, that'd be good. All right, so with our jacquard now, prick all over. Okay, once your arm gets sore, just switch. There we go. It's about a million holes in there, exactly what we need. Flip our pork back over. A little bit of mustard. I do have a band-aid on guys. Um, this is for my family, so I don't think they are gonna mind at all. If I was doing this for a catering job, I would be wearing gloves. Okay, so in with a rub, you're choosing. This is Sweet Succulent Swine. It's from Heavenly Hell Championship Barbecue. It's amazing on all things pork, chicken as well. Okay, pat that in. Now we might as well season this side as well. A little bit of mustard and some more of our gorgeous rub here. All right, so that's our pork belly porchetta prepped. Now let's get on to the stuffing. Okay, for our stuffing, fennel, chorizo, apple, onion. Okay, um, some rosemary from the garden. Okay, so just with our fennel, just cut out the... Uh, Let's get our onion. Okay, for our apple, load your apple. Get a spin away. There's our apple. Okay, apple done. Okay, for our chorizo, just cut them in half. Okay. And we want to take the skin off the chorizo, okay? So just give it a snap and just try and pull the skin back from the meat. So I'll just start off with strips and then just bunch them up together. Come back the other way. Get your skillet on the stove. About a tablespoon of olive oil. All 
All right, my friends, so we've had our pork and our stuffing uh, resting in the fridge overnight. So the stuffing's nice and cold. Um, I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning. Uh, drying out the skin of the pork belly is very important. Uh, that's how you're gonna get the maximum amount of crunch on your pork belly is from drying out the skin. So I just let it dry out in the fridge. I put the pork belly on a wire rack, skin side up, uncovered in the fridge, uh, absolute minimum two days. This here has been four days, okay? So just to give you an idea. Gee, these gloves are hard to get on sometimes. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the uh, rosemary. It's uh, done its job in terms of infusing flavor. Okay, so grab your stuffing. You just wanna try and get it in as evenly as you can. All right, so really, really good. If you did have uh, more stuffing, definitely go this side as well. So you can cover another section here, but uh, this is good. So now the fun part is tying it up. Okay, so here's our porchetta, all rolled up. Just through one end, just through the middle. Just essentially going through our stuffing back. Okay, now I don't necessarily like it going through the crackle, through the skin. I've got uh, some rice bran oil here. Avocado oil is the best. Uh, vegetable oil, you want something with a high smoke point and we just want a little bit, okay? This is just to give it a nice golden color, okay? Okay, so you can see on this side here that's coming up, you can start seeing those bubbles. And this has been on for about three minutes. We want to get an even amount of bubbling and crackling all around it. So, whoa, look at that one. <laughs> yeah, this thing's exploding. So, gorgeous bubbles there. What we're going to do is we're just going to stop the rotisserie on the other side. Just for like 10 or so seconds. And get it spinning again. That way we're just allowing this side, see how it's starting to build up some bubble formation now. We're just going to give that a chance to explode at the same time as the other side so we don't end up with an unevenness of crunch. Okay, so 10 minutes in and I've just raised the bar for the first time, okay? So I'm obviously very, very happy uh, with those bubbles. Let's have a look at them. There they are. That looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so if you look at my charcoal setup now, I've got a gap in the middle. And the reason being is I want more crackle. I want more bubbles on this side. And I want a few more bubbles on this side as well. Okay, the middle is perfect. It looks absolutely sensational. So see how I'm just focusing throughout this whole cook. I'm just focusing on the crackle. Okay, I'm not worried about the meat, what temp the meat is at yet. I just want to get that crackle as even as I can uh, before I start focusing on the temperature of the meat. Okay. So I've split my charcoal in two. We're gonna focus heat on this side, try and get a few more bubbles, and on this side as well. All right, we've been spinning now for a total of one hour, okay? And it looks it looks pretty good, okay? So I'm very, very happy with the way it looks. Um, don't sacrifice your entire pork just for one little section that hasn't crackled, okay? So like, you know, here, I'd love for this to look exactly the same as that, but I'm not gonna sacrifice the whole thing just to try and get some bubbles there. I know it's crispy, okay? So that is fine. We've been spinning for a little over an hour. I'm very, very happy with that. I don't want it to darken. I don't want it to change color. I want to serve it like that, okay? So I'm gonna raise the bar now and we're gonna let it come up to an internal temperature of around 180 Fahrenheit before we take it off the pit. 15 minutes, hence set under foil. Leave the spit bar in during the rest, okay? So it doesn't sort of leak out all its juices and it doesn't start going cold, all right? Get your clamps out. The best thing to do really is take off all the twine uh, before you slice it. Just makes it a little bit easier and then you can just focus on just slicing. So during that resting phase, take off the twine. 
we won't do that. Now in terms of slicing your porchetta, two choices, you can go down each divot, okay, which is great, no problem. Um, the only thing is you don't really hear much of the crunch and you've spent all this time, you're entertaining guests, wow them my friends, wow them, okay. So we're going to go straight down the guts here. To reveal a gorgeous Christmas porchetta. Okay, absolutely delicious. It smells amazing. Here's some of that golden crunch. Wow. All right, let's take a bite of this porchetta. My mouth is salivating. The flavors, it's just a marriage that works so well. Seriously, you will not have an unhappy guest if you serve this to them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed those tips around live fire, sort of management and managing the heat. Getting that crackle sort of set early on the rotisserie is very important. And the quality of the charcoal that you use. Olive Pip Co Premium Briquettes is what I use uh, for all my cooking because it's the best. All right, my friends, if you're not subscribed to this video and you like what you saw today, smash the hell out of that subscribe button, ring that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Thanks.